In this video, I want to go over some methods of evaluating predictions. Essentially, how can we tell whether a prediction is good or bad? It is not at all straightforward to evaluate a prediction, and you can't really classify these as either good or bad, right or wrong. There is a lot of usefulness in each prediction, even if it doesn't line up perfectly to the real price. For instance, with this prediction, while there is a bit of noise with up and down, overall it predicts a downward move and an upward move, which as you can see, does get matched by the real price. If you were to use this prediction prior to the move happening, uh, it would give you enough information to enter into a move here and maybe close here. So I have devised a system for detecting all of these predictions, their ranges, and then how much of that prediction gets played out by the real price. So you can see instances in which the predicted price is opposite of what actually plays out. Later on, there does end up being being a move that matches this downward prediction. Now, it's a give and take how much weight we give to these future predictions, um, and there's benefits and trade-offs with every sort of metric of evaluation. So for instance, this move, it does predict a downward move, and it does largely get played out, and we record that as 74% accuracy. And with the upward move, although the move does go far outside the range, what this evaluation method is looking for is if you sell here and buy here, if you predict it's going down here, from here to here, will you be right? in the future. And then we weight that correctness by how big each of these moves are. So you can see with a much larger move on the low direction, the low percent of the move matters much more than the high percent. So even though this tiny little upward move gets filled out completely, it does not affect the weighted average as much. Looking at this, it is 50% accurate, and I feel like that has a very intuitive measure of the prediction accuracy. So I'm fairly happy with this prediction evaluation method, and you can see that, quite frankly, just playing it out as well, it does look quite accurate frequently. You will also notice that we are not we are not measuring Bitcoin. So I have been developing some methods for adapting these models to NASDAQ futures and Forex commodities. I have some more to announce about that later, but for now, let's look at some of the results. So along with just outright predictions, I created a baseline random walk prediction where each bar will be assigned a random value, um, which overall equals out to about what Lion and Bobcat predict per move. So they usually only do a maximum of, of about a 0 0.1 to 0.2% move when things are working correctly. And you can see that with randomness, uh, there's a nice distribution right here, and there's a little bit of a bump at the 100. So I do need to talk about how technically with this method of evaluation, if we have a flat line, it does technically count as 100% accurate. This is just a trade-off of doing a test like this is you can't really get away from that. But with with trading, what this means is that the real price goes beyond what the predicted price was. In trading, that's really useful because if you're looking to sell here and the real price goes beyond your sell point, your take profit gets hit. This is actually only a good thing, and we know that the Lion and Bobcat models don't give flatline predictions, so this method of evaluation works. We can see that otherwise we have this very nice distribution here. It's it's just a random bell distribution with a negative bias. Overall, the average percent of the move that gets played out is 37%. So again, that means if it predicts that it is moving all the way up here, the real price only goes up about 30% of the way on average. This is a pretty low percent, and obviously anything less than 100 means that your take profit doesn't get hit every single time. And in fact, the number of 100% accurate moves is only 1% of prediction. And then I've graphed that down here. You can see we have this steep drop off and it goes below the one to one ratio line. 50% of predictions are not even getting halfway fulfilled. In fact, they're only getting a quarter of the way fulfilled. Very, very low accuracy rate. Now for the lion, we can see a steep level of correct prediction. It's not just randomly throwing out predictions, but it is trying to accurately make predictive moves about where the price is going. Now for the lion model, a little over half of the move gets played out. So again, just to reiterate, if it predicts it's going here, on average, the real price will go a little over half of the way. And again, with a weighted prediction like this, where most of it is on the high end, that means that 
the high move is getting filled out a little over halfway. We can see that the number of 100% fulfilled moves or even 75% fulfilled moves is well over a quarter um, and it's coming up to about 22% here. If we graph this, our prediction play out is above the one to one line indicating a bias toward accurate predictions. For the Bobcat, we have the bell curve, except it is skewed closer to the 50% mark. Again, we have many 100% moves that played out, and on average, 63, almost 64% of the move is getting played out on a regular basis. So on average, almost two-thirds of the move gets played out. We have a higher number of 100% moves, almost 25% here, almost one in four moves play out completely accurately, and almost half of all moves will make it 75% of the way there. We are well above the one-to-one -one line on this chart, um, again indicating a very strong bias toward accurate prediction. Now for the crypto tests, again, we do a random walk prediction with Bitcoin. This is showing us how much of our, um, how much of a flat line bias we have, which isn't very high. Um, in total, we're looking about one to two percent freebies, essentially. Um, we see a similar curve that we did on the Microsoft graph, and we'll compare that to the Bobcat graph. Again, a steep number of 100% predictions. On average, 64% of the move is getting played out. This is actually higher than the accuracy on Bobcat for Microsoft. Again, Lion was trained specifically on Bitcoin price, so this makes sense that it would be better at predicting Bitcoin than it is Microsoft. And a whopping 31%, almost one in three moves with the Lion model completely plays out to the full. And almost half of all moves will make it 75% of the way there. Um, these, these are very, very strong biases toward accurate predictions. Many of you who use it have let me know that this is definitely accurate. Now, as an experiment, I did run a strict take profit stop loss at every single prediction. If you set up a take profit here, and a stop loss here. What are the odds that you just, without even thinking, without any other outside knowledge, if you just took the predictions blindly, how accurate are these predictions going to be? On about 700 tests, um, which also stop losses include trades that take too long to play out. So if it takes more than an hour or two to play out, it does not count as a take profit. We have almost 53%. It's 52.8%. I, I broke down all of these moves based on whether the high of the move played out or if the low of the move played out. So essentially what that means is if we split the move into the high move and the low move, we're just keeping track of which one played out. Interestingly, there is a bias towards high predictions being more accurate than low predictions. At the time that I did this test, I think Bitcoin was hitting its all-time highs around 125. So it could have to do with just more high moves playing out in general. But but this alone is really interesting because it basically proves that even if you don't use any sort of confluence or any other sort of trading indicators, the bot itself wins more than 50% of the time. Now you combine that with your own expertise and I have a feeling this will go drastically up. Up. One thing to note is the bot does really, really poorly with trends. And so usually when there has been a large downward move, it will continue to predict upward all the way down, uh, which will get you into trouble. So after you've had a basing in this sort of range is where the bot is best and it will be the most accurate here. Um, but frequently I will just come on here and test the bot randomly at random times. And let's see, we're we're predicting up to 113.8 and 114. So let's just say 114. Um, and frequently this move will just literally play out when I come back later to check it. Also, if you're not voting, you should totally throw a vote on the website. It's kind of fun just to see what the community thinks about Bitcoin's price. So then we come to Bobcat. Notably, this is lower than the lion model. Remember, we're on Bitcoin now. And so this is the reason that I picked Bobcat for Microsoft is it just already has a tendency to be more accurate with stocks than it does with cryptos. The lion is just a better model. That's why it's a higher tier. And I know that most people who have worked with these AI models, uh, they also agree that the lion is far better. OK, so that brings us to the panther, um, which you'll notice has a very, very different type of prediction that it throws out. So frequently you'll see that these predictions will line up. Um, but in general, the panther throws more of a generic prediction of up or down rather than these outright price predictions. So the baseline prediction for this is a bit different as well. 
So instead of doing a random walk, we are essentially doing a flat line prediction. And you just predict how far away does the price get from this flat line, and that would be your error, then that's what the baseline is. The Panther comes in and essentially has a bias towards down or up. The distance from the line to the low will be an error, and the distance from the high to the low will be an error as well. The maximum of these two is the max error for this window. And what we find is that with the Panther, because that error now changes from this line down to here, the Panther actually ends up slightly more accurate at predicting the trend direction. So for this test, we find that per bar, it is almost twice that of the Panther model. In terms of the maximum error that is possible when doing just a flat line, it almost gets halved when using the Panther model. Now taking an average of all of the error, we also notice that the maximum of the average gets reduced. So in other words, on average, these predictions are getting pushed down closer to 0% error, um, which again, you can see the average here is almost double. Per bar, it is almost double. The moving average error is almost double. The high, meaning the maximum error on the high side, is almost double. The low is not quite as drastic of a change, um, which is really interesting because we also saw that with how many of the lion prediction moves played out correctly, high or low. Okay, and then lastly, I just wanted to do a quick test on how many of these moves hit this like 0% accuracy. And we can see that per bar, way more of these moves end up in the low percents using the panther versus just a random walk. So this shows a clear bias, like the panther model definitely learns something useful. We can also see basically on every single metric, the, the number of uh, these columns count the number of, of low error predictions. And, and we can see that we went from about 350 correct predictions to 500, 380 to 430, uh, 260 up to 315. All right, so I'm flipping back to our uh, prediction page and it seems like the opposite has played out. But um, if we go ahead and run these predictions again, it still looks like it's predicting upwards. So I'm gonna hang on to this move. Um, and here, I'll just let it play out and then we'll, we'll come back later and, and see what happens. Alright, so I'm getting bored. Um, we've been waiting. It did not really make a move at all. Um, and, and I've been checking on it this whole time and it's still predicting upward. Yeah, it looks like for both models. Um, right around that 13, 13, 8, yeah, 13, 1400 number. So I'm assuming at some point it will hit this point. It, the, the bots are seeing something in here that makes it think that it is moving upward. Um, we just happen to jump in at literally the top of this region, but it's been predicting up this whole time. So any, any one of these moves, um, would probably be a good entry and we'll just have to see how it plays out. I'm getting bored. I just wanted to give a brief overview of how the models are doing, uh, the accuracy and such and, um, and all of the different research results that I found. If you have any questions about this or if you wanna see anything different, let me know and stay tuned for more updates. All right, see you next time. Bye.